Hi again folks, this is Vince from Top Hobby Trains. Um, we've had some issues uh, with the new Bachman N-Scale uh, Berkshire. Customers have complained that the locomotive runs rough at slow speeds. Uh, we took one, and uh, the one that I did my little um, coupler conversion, and I was able to duplicate the issue on this locomotive. And what it turns out to be is um, there are in here, and I'll show you in a few minutes, there are inside there are little brass bushings that the axles run through. And those bushings on some of the locomotives are milled a little bit too large, so the, the, the um, axle actually twists slightly. These locomotives run with two drivers that are geared and then two that are actually pushed and pulled through the side rods. So when that happens, if the wheel shimmies a little bit in its uh, uh, bushings, uh, you get a little bit of a binding. Now, I know that uh, there are some fellows that have been able to correct this using the um, EMF uh, and the, the settings on, from Soundtracks, and that works in some of the cases. Uh, it doesn't work on this locomotive that I've uh, actually created the issue with. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to open this up, and I'll show you the inside uh, so that you can uh, see exactly what I'm uh, speaking of. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the two screws out. There's a screw here and here, and I've taken the cover plate off. And I'm revealing the uh, four inside, uh, four drivers on the inside. You see here, the two middle drivers are geared, and the two outer drivers are not. They're uh, pushed and pulled by the, by the side rods. This is a configuration that even Cato has gone to in recent years with their GS4 and uh, the latest uh, FEF. But we're going to see here, there are small brass bushings here and here. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of play in this. Not much, but just enough side to side so that the wheel can twist back and forth. That play is enough to cause these drivers to bind. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together, and then I'll run the locomotive, and I'll show you exactly what I'm speaking of. Well, okay, so I've got the locomotive hooked up to a power source and I'm running the locomotive at very, very slow speed uh, to simulate, um, you know, on the track. And I'm just going to show you what I mean by this. I'm going to push the drivers here and let them run. And you'll see it binds there a little bit. Alright, you see that? It's bound. Now watch this. I'm going to push this this way and there it goes. So, I thought for a second, well, what can I do? And generally, I'll put shims underneath where the brass is to keep everything pushed down. That didn't work. I did try that. Um, so, I came up with another little solution that you might want to try if uh, you have one of these and it's doing it. It um, doesn't take a lot, but you have to be very delicate. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this driver. And I'm going to wait for it to come up top, take off the power. And then I'm going to take my fine tweezers and I'm going to gently push it out. So I'm going to put a little bend in it. All right, you don't want to do it too much. You don't want to break it. Because if you break it, God only knows what will happen. But uh, here, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply power again. If I can apply the power. There you go. Get it going. And the, the wheel should not bind. All right, so there you go. It's not binding. And I'm going to put this on the track, and I'll show you how it's running on the track.
Okay, we're back to the layout, and I've put, put the locomotive on the tracks, and I've been running it. And uh, just from the last little adjustment we did on the workbench, this is what the results are. So I'm going to slow it down here as it comes around the curve, because it seemed to uh, bind up on the curves as those wheels slid uh, in order to go around a tighter curve. So here you go. And it doesn't seem to bind. I mean, it's still running uh, you know, very, very smoothly. I think that's very acceptable for a $200 sound locomotive. Um, and here you go. So I'm just going to let it run, and that way you can see how that uh, little bending. Now you just have to be careful. You don't want to bend that too much, and you only want to bend the one side rod. One should be flat and normal, and the other one you could bend out a little bit as I showed you. Here you go, going over my switch tracks. I actually have a dead piece of track in these switch tracks that I haven't jumpered out yet. And uh, notice how the locomotive traverses that dead piece pretty nicely. I kind of use that as an engage to see if a locomotive traverses that without stalling, that means I'm good. This is a little sharp bend that I have in the track here that it's going through. And it seems to traverse that fairly nicely. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it and back it up. So it's speed step, uh, the, the, the slowest speed step. Now there are CV adjustments that you can do uh, for this particular locomotive. Uh, you can play with them. I know that there's some fellows uh, on the, the, the different uh, blogs that have been talking about them. We use them pretty extensively in our packages. Uh, but you can start with uh, the Tsunami Motor Control starting at CV 209, 210, 211 has no value. Uh, for the tsunami, 212, 213, and 214. You can uh, play with those values. You can go online to the Soundtracks website, get the Steam technical reference, and you can uh, see what the defaults are and uh, get your locomotive running just the way you like it on your own layout. Thanks for looking. Bye.